Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It's that time of the month again where Google releases the monthly security updates and this month is February and we're, today I'll be showing you how to flash the M4F26 O or uh, I think there's another variant for the any Verizon phones out there, Verizon users and let's get started. So currently I am on the M4F26 J, the January security update and uh, so far so good. So currently I'm rooted, I'm using Magisk and I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modified Nexus 6P to the latest security update. Now keep in mind if you have mods such as Viper for Android or the Pixel mod, you'll need to download those as well uh, within this process. I'll let you know when, but if you download the latest version that is made for the N4F26 O or the other version that Verizon has, uh, then you'll be just fine flashing that in TWRP. So I guess keep that in mind and I'll remind you later on anyway. So to get started, we'll need to download a few things and also you would have need to set up ADB and Fastboot, but mainly Fastboot, uh, working on your computer and with your device. So if you haven't done that, you can check out one of my videos here I have on, I have in a playlist. I just bring it over here and this will show you how to update and install platform tools uh, in a way where you can, well, if when things don't work, you can just come back here and update it yourself. And this makes sure, this makes sure that you're always up to date using platform tools, which is very important. So here it covers all three major OSs, so you can take a look at that if you like. So now uh, I assume that you've got Fastboot working at least, and now we shall continue. So what you need to do is download two things. Here I have in front of me is the Angular factory image, the latest one, and of course the latest version of Magisk. Now this is uh, where it kind of deviates a little bit. So you can either use Magisk like I am, or you can use SuperSU if that's your thing or uh, you don't even have to root after this if that's uh, more your speed. So you need to download whatever routing method that you like to use, whether it's Magisk or SuperSU, it does not matter. I just like to use Magisk because I can bypass safety net on that still, and that means I get to use Android Pay on a rooted device. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be using Magisk here. First, uh, the other thing you want to download, of course, is the factory image. And if we go over to the developers.google.com forward slash Android forward slash images, That'll be a link down below. You can click on Angular for Nexus 6P on the right hand side and it'll take you directly to the Angular table. Now we want to scroll all the way down and you can see we have the M4F26 O of February and the NUF26 K and then note here it says Verizon only. So if you're on Verizon you want to download this factory image, the last one, but if you're anywhere else in the world you can probably download this one. And one little thing that I noticed is that the bootloader is the same at least on the N4F26 O, but on the or in the N4F26 O, the radio image or the baseband is actually lower than the one that you got on the M4F26 J, which is uh, kind of weird. So uh, I might not choose to flash that, but if you experience problems, I guess you can flash the radio image that comes with the factory image. So choose one of these two, either one, depending on if you're a Verizon or not, and you would have had that downloaded here already. So once you got it downloaded, all you got to do is uh, open up the zip and we'll take this uh, step by step. So it's going to open up something like this. You're going to open that folder inside and then since the uh, here the bootloader is the same as before, we don't need to extract that, but uh, we can always double check and extract this later anyway. If you're, say you're coming from a Marshmallow or a even older version of 7.1.1 or 7.0, then you might want to update the bootloader and radio as well. You might as well. So in the case that you don't need to update, then you don't need to worry about it. We're going to open up the image angular m 4 f 26 o zip file within there as well. This will extract it to a temporary directory and then it will show us all the files inside where we only need to extract our usual three. I'm sure you guys, or well, most of you would know what I'm going to extract here. So I'm going to take the, I'm not sure why it's the other way around, but we're going to take the boot image, we're going to take the system image, and we're going to take the vendor image. I'm going to extract those three files outside, just any way that you like. Now, it shouldn't take too long, although the system image does get bigger pretty much every month. So we'll wait for that to extract, and we'll get flashing pretty soon. So now uh, I guess I should talk about the or downloading any mods that you might have had. So for example, you had the pixel mod. I'm sure it probably has been updated already. We'll have a quick look on the XDA thread. Uh, it looks like not yet. 
that is fine. So no worries, if you are currently running the pixel mod now, like today, and by the time this is uploaded it's still not out, then you might want to hold off on flashing the older one, because it may not necessarily work well with your device, where you end up in a boot loop or something like that. But always uh, wait for the any mods that you might be using to be updated to the latest version before you flash it, unless you're willing to go back and forth a little bit with flashing system images, which isn't too much of a hassle, but it can be, it can seem like one. So right now the Pixel mod is not updated as of yet. I know it's only been released about nine hours ago, maybe, but uh, let's have a look and see if we do actually have an updated Pixel mod. Let's see. Uh, this one, probably not yet as well. Yes, not yet. So wait for your mods to get updated first and then flash them over, but you can pretty much stay stock in the meantime if that's what you're looking for. But uh, there we go. So. The next thing you also want to download is Magisk. I didn't really show this, but Magisk has had a kind of major big update. Uh, that being major and big are describing the same thing. And basically, you don't need to flash, or sorry, you don't need to download PWH's super user from the Play Store anymore, where the super user is actually built in, or the managing part of it, is actually built into the Magisk Manager app, which you can download off the Play Store. Now, it's also been updated to 11.1, .1, pretty much the core version, Magisk. Uh, and there are a couple of new things like Magisk SU, which is based off PWH's super user, which is what they use now, and now is uh, also compatible with, um, or a little bit more compatible with things, uh, sorry, with Super SU, and you can also use FlashFire now when you're using, um, what, do you, what do you call it, when you're using Magisk, which is great. So I'm going to be definitely using this a little bit more, well, heaps more, and maybe we'll see another FlashFire video somewhere along the lines. So you can update this to the app if you're already rooted using Magisk, or uh, what I'm going to do is download the Magisk zip file here, or here, and downloads, and copy that to my device. So that's the other file that you see over here. So now that our files have finished downloading, I'm just going to minimize and close things. Okay. So we got these files ready. Whoops. So we got these files ready now. We have our boot, system, and vendor image. And what we're going to do now is copy the Magisk zip file to our phone. Make sure you've done that. So to do that, as usual, we need to scroll down, tap on USB charging this device to make it transfer files. And then you should be able to see your device under this PC. If I just bring it over here, Nexus 6P, you can see I've already copied the latest version of Magisk, the installer down here, which is great. And so we can close that. And just on our device, just having a look, you can see, um, you won't lose any data doing this. So you can see all my icons are laid out like this, the wallpapers like that. Magisk Manager in the middle and that we are properly rooted using Magisk SU. So that would change depending on what you used. And if you use Super SU, I'm pretty sure you know what that icon and app looks like. And you'll be able to see from there. But I'm curious to see um, that super user in action later on. So from here, all you have to do is reboot into the bootloader. So what I like to do is disconnect the USB cable because uh, that prevents the screen from coming up with a battery charging uh, like icon screen when we power off. So we want to power off our device and just hold on to the USB cable, don't don't drop it or anything. And once it's off, now this turns off pretty quickly, so once it's off you want to reboot into the bootloader. You can do that by holding the power and volume down buttons. I'll just make this a little bit bigger. So the power and volume down buttons. So hold those together for about three to four seconds and then you should boot into the bootloader. If it doesn't then after holding it for about five or six seconds, you can let go of the buttons and see if that actually changes anything in terms of booting you into the bootloader. So if I uh, lift this up a little bit, well, it's a little out of focus, but you can see the, well, I can see that the bootloader is 03.64 and the, the baseband is 0379. And as you saw in the factory image that we had the 0, um, 0.3.78 baseband image or the radio instead. So I'm not going to flash this and the bootloader is the same. But I'll just double check one second. 0364 and is the same. So you don't have to update it, the bootloader or the radio if you are coming from at least the N4F26J or I I think. So uh, that that is confirmed now. So we're going to plug in our USB cable now and we're going to start flashing the images. All really cool and stuff. So to do this we're going to have to bring up the command prompt window and well, bring up Fastboot, any way to access Fastboot. 
Now, if you followed my videos, you can just open up the command prompt window, at least on Windows, and you'll be able to start typing in your fastboot commands as you please. So I'm just going to organize it like this, and what we're going to do is to type in fastboot devices to make sure our device is plugged in properly, just so we don't waste too much time. Fastboot devices, and there we are, that's my serial number, so we know our device is connected properly. Now what we're going to do now is flash the boot image first, so I'm going to type in fastboot flash boot, leave space in the end, dragging the image onward, onto the command prompt window, and then hit enter. Now after that we're going to flash the system image, we're going to type in fastboot flash system, leave a space on the end, drag in our system image, hit enter, and we'll wait for this a little bit, it is 2.62 gigabytes. So I'll fast forward this step, and maybe roughly about one to two minutes, you'll be waiting here for the system image to get flashed. So I'm going to fast forward this and then we'll flash the vendor image. Okay, so we finished flashing the system image, now onwards to the vendor image. So we're going to type in fastboot flash vendor, leave a space in the end and drag in our vendor image, and we're going to hit enter. Okay, so we'll finish that. We're going to reboot into the recovery, and that should be flashed with TWRP. If not, then I guess that doesn't really matter. But we're going to be rooting our device now since we've replaced the boot image with the stock boot image. We need to reboot our device. So I'm going to press or select, use the uh, volume buttons until you get to recovery mode, and then press the power button. And that will boot us into TWRP. And when that is done, we're going to be flashing uh, any mods or zips that we need. So in my case, I'm going to be flashing Magisk. Uh, you might be flashing SuperSU. Uh, you might be flashing the Pixel mod when it gets updated, or you might not flash anything at all if that's your thing. You don't want to be rooted, or you don't want to use the Pixel mod anymore. Uh, that is completely fine. I'm going to change the brightness here a little bit because no one can see otherwise. Okay. So from this screen, uh, it may ask you, oh. Do you want to allow system modifications? You can swipe yes, or you can say keep read only, it doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is now tap on install, scroll down, and this is where you're going to flash any zips that you want to flash. So I'm going to be flashing Magisk, like I said, like just then. And if you have any mods such as the Pixel mod, you want to flash these, I guess, in any order, but you might as well do it after Magisk. So that's done, that's all I need to install. But if you need to install more, press the back button here and just locate the zip file and swipe to flash. And once you've done everything, you can hit up the reboot menu and then tap on system. And that'll reboot you back into Android. So from here, I guess we're going to wait and fast forward this until we get all the way into Android. And you'll see that we are updated, rooted, and still have everything intact. So no data has been lost. So I'm going to fast forward this until we get into Android. Okay, so we just finished booting up, now just, just finishing Android update. We didn't wipe the cache or anything, but if we did, it'd probably take a little bit longer to boot up, and that is indeed optional. So right now you can see everything stayed the same, nothing has changed, but if we go down to the settings, and let's just have a look at the, the uh, device info about phone, you can see we're on the 5th of February security patch, and we are on the N4F26.0, which is uh, exactly what we need. So right now, if we go open up Magisk Manager, it should be able to tell us that we're rooted, and there we are, and that there are no problems. Magisk Hide is also in play. They've changed a little bit in that, so it might actually work better. But that's it for this video, pretty much. Thank you guys for watching, and if you have any suggestions or other videos that you might want to see that I can surely consider, uh, feel free to leave it down in the comments below, or you can, yeah, that'll be probably the best way to do things. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one.